right? We are live again. So two words before starting. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, I am Manuel and together with Fabio and Mauro, we are a part of the Italian side of this project. So this is part three in a three parts webinar series about educational LARPs. It is organized in the context of CARE, Climate Action Role-Playing Experience and Erasmus Plus project funded by the European Union through the Agenzia Italiana per la Gioventù, our national agency. Here there is also participants of Animus Foundation. There is Caterina, Tomas and Polina. And I don't see Lukas today. I'm very sad about it, but what can we do? We'll see in Croatia, I hope. So today we have again our guest Oscar talking about to the structure of manuals, right? So the materials yeah. and stuff for the presentation of the game. I already presented him in the first webinar. Go catch that up in case you haven't. And well, I don't know. Let's start, Oscar. I yes. do. What are we going to do today? All right. And the last time. Uh... We talk about uh, the flow of ideas in uh, designing a, a role-playing game, especially a LARP, a chamber LARP, because they are my my special area. <laughs> and uh, but this time we are going to focus on how to write a game uh, using uh, Crescendo Giocoso, my main publication, as a model to see a way, one of the many ways to to put down our ideas uh, in in a text. Yeah. So if uh, everything is all right, I can uh, share my my screen so we can Please do the presentation this time. Uh, so let's have a try. All right. Can you see my screen? Loud and clear. All right. So uh, the last time I I stressed the the, the importance of uh, having a, a big idea like a, a starting point. And uh, I have uh, two examples on the right of a different uh, kind of uh, a big idea for a game. Uh, the number one, uh, two players for one character, it's uh, a big idea uh, about uh, game mechanics. And uh, it's the start for uh, my scenario, Wanderers in a Sea of Fog. And uh, the second one, exploring the labyrinth, it's uh, a big idea. Let's start from uh, the setting. Uh, and then uh, <clears throat> this is a game I, I wrote with uh, uh, Chiara Locatelli and Dario Prasegi, and uh, it was a game about a fantasy setting. And we would like to try to recreate a fantasy setting in a, in a chamber lab situation. So in a, in a single and very simple room. And uh, from uh, the big idea, uh, I think that in a very natural way, uh, flow a lot of, of questions. So if uh, I have uh, a big idea about game mechanics, uh, like in the number one example, uh, I have to, to find out the best the best setting that fits my my game mechanic. So for example, in this example, in an hostel, every criminal has a fake identity. So we have two roles and uh, it was a, a very good fit for the for the mechanic idea. And uh, uh, of course, uh, there can be a lot of, uh, of other questions in order to develop the game, but it's uh, it's a starting point. And in the in example number two, the point was, uh, okay, many uh, many rooms in a single room, so how can we do it? And uh, the first idea was uh, lights out in order to, to bring uh, mystery and imagination in uh, every kind of room. And uh, we uh, we find the solution to to attach to to, to put uh, uh, sheets uh, with description on the walls, and uh, of course, and then uh, we have to use uh, torches, for example, 
you know, in order to can read in the dark. So uh, every time you have a solution to a problem, you have another problem, but uh, um, a flux of, uh, of very little problems uh, is, is always uh, better than uh, just uh, a big uh, dilemma about uh, our game. So the, uh, we talk about the big idea. Uh, Crescendo Giocoso will be the model for, uh, for, for it's just a way to put down on words uh, the ideas about a game. And uh, when uh, I wrote game before uh, this anthology, every time I need to, to start again from, uh, from scraps, to reinvent the well again, uh, because every game was uh, was different. And it can be a, an effort and uh, and uh, quite uh, stressful uh, without meaning. So now I have uh, my way. It works uh, for me. Uh, of course, um, uh, every every person uh, have, uh, is uh, is way of uh, working, but it's just uh, a model to to have some uh, suggestions and uh, and inspiration. Uh, so the main distinction to me, the main two, two section are instructions for everyone. We were speaking, uh, talking about it uh, even in the, in the last time. And then uh, character sheets and, uh, and confidential information. So the, the big difference is information for everyone and information for just one player or for just one team of players. So let's start with the instruction for for everyone. In uh, in crescendo Jokos. Uh, Oscar, sorry, I don't see your slides moving. Ah, okay. I'm... I think you uh, are okay. presenting like the docs instead of the presentation. All Can right. It be? Ah, all right. Well, let's see. You say it, and the sharing is. Uh... Okay. You can see. also just move in the Google uh, slide, or I don't know. All right, I was uh, moving them, but uh, okay. Now I see the sharing is uh, no. Okay, if I start the 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 presentation, uh, the the sharing uh, yeah. freezes. So no problem. I'm gonna. The, the... Yeah, we can just go on from here. I think it's all right. Okay. All right. So so uh, we talk about crescendo giocoso, instruction for everyone, and then. For the instruction, um, I use a free section, setup, game mechanics, and epilogue. So let's start from, uh, from the setup. In the setup section, uh, we need to, to focus on, uh, on the play area, because of course, uh, for, for a tabletop game, it can be very simple, but when uh, we, <clears throat> we came down to, to LARP, we have to know where we're going to, to play. If uh, it's a very simple uh, room, um, we can use uh, chairs, tables, or, or maybe we prefer an empty space. And Cachando um, Jocoso is uh, written uh, with uh, the idea of uh, an audience uh, uh, that is going to play without um, a game master, a facilitator, or the the author in uh, in presence. So everyone is uh, everything is written in uh, first person plural, and uh, one uh, one person just uh, read it aloud for uh, for all the group. So it's like we are going to take some chairs. So we we put them around the table. Uh, one plus our number, for example, it can be a, a kind of instruction for this uh, for this section. Uh, when I speak about endouts, I'm going to to write down uh, what uh, the um, what, what kind of document the the group needs to to print to to play because Crescendo Giocoso is a print and play anthology. And uh, then we uh, we come to the setting. So uh, the setting can be very simple. Uh, maybe you can just uh, say the title of a very famous franchise, Lord of the Rings, uh, Star Wars, or something like that. We don't use this uh, kind of solution for Crescendo Giocoso, but if you can, it's a very simple way to, to have a common ground with the, with the players. And uh, But of course, you have the problem to 
uh, to define uh, the the part of the setting that is, is interesting for you. It's very different playing uh, uh, a group of uh, Hobbits uh, walking in the Shire or to play a, a very epic battle uh, between, uh, you know, elves and dogs or something like that. So um, using something famous uh, is uh, can be useful, but it's also tricky. And uh, of course, you have to select what kind of information are relevant for your game in any case. And um, sometimes in some games, uh, players have to, to develop the setting. So it can be a good section to, to ask questions to them. And uh, the same goes for, uh, for, Karatex, for Karatex, because in this section, uh, we explain uh, how the character sheet are are developed, and uh, in in order to give uh, an idea to all the players uh, of what they are going to to read in the in the confidential section, and um, this is the idea for uh, for the setup. And um, the set in the setup we have uh, all the information. Uh, the people need for uh, uh, prepare the the space to print out the things uh, to know something about the setting. But uh, um, when they made all these things done, they are done. They don't need to to remember uh, all this uh, this kind of information during the game. So uh, this is the idea about the the first uh, section. And, um, in the most of the case, they can read. Uh, this information allowed and follow the, uh, the instruction and then proceed to the game mechanics. So the second section for the instruction for everyone is about the game mechanics. Of course, <laughs> I just write down rules because in, uh, in this section uh, I write uh, uh, all the the information the players need to keep in mind while playing. So uh, they have to they can't uh, go in uh, in the part of the of the game space. I write in game mechanics. Uh, they have restriction in uh, in talking. Uh, uh, they have to play with lights out or something like that. I'm going to to write it down in uh, in game mechanics. So it's the the main section of the of the instruction, and uh, when uh, we we try to put down instruction uh, in in a group when we organize a, an event like uh, Larp Jam, our convention to to write a game together, we focus on game mechanics because uh, this is the the main section when. Uh, when you have the game mechanic, uh, I think uh, you have uh, you have the game idea, and then uh, setup and the epilogue can came uh, in a second moment. This is this is my experience, of course. And uh, in game mechanics, uh, examples can be can be very important um, because sometimes uh, uh, you can have uh, some uh, rules very. Very hard to to write down, but very but very simple to understand when you read an example. When uh, uh, I write uh, game mechanics, I try to uh, to not give uh, anything uh, for granted. So I find myself uh, explaining very simple uh, uh, child game, for example because uh, I'm not sure in every country they are familiar as they are in Italy, for example. So I try to uh, to stress the importance to not giving uh, anything for granted. But of course, uh, uh, we always need a balance because if I write down a very long uh, uh, list of instruction, it's going to be more difficult to, for players to keep them in mind. So um, it's not easy to understand how much you have to, to put down because, uh, of course, if you say uh, too little, 
they are not going to to understand the game fully and if you're going to write down too much they are going to be confused or they can't understand uh, uh, the game uh, as a whole and uh, so um, i can't uh, stress enough the importance of uh, of the, the balance and i think uh, it's a matter of the which kind of game you are uh, you're writing down because uh, maybe if you're going to to explain a comedy game you don't want people to be to to tired after uh, uh, hearing all the game instruction uh, and maybe if you are uh, in, uh, trying to explain a more complex or dramatic game then uh, you want to be as clear as possible in order to avoid interruption uh, during the game because uh, it's not the kind of game a loss can, uh, can resolve everything and uh, you can uh, you always want to to prevent this uh, this kind of situation, and uh, the last uh, the last part is about the uh, the epilogue. In the epilogue, uh, I write all the the strategies of the game to bring the story to an end, and uh, it's uh, it's very important part because uh, when you are uh, you are not there. With the ground playing, you cannot be like you know uh, a movie director and just say stop. It's good like that, but uh, they have to to understand. They have to know uh, when the game uh, is going to to end, and uh, that can be a very different uh, strategy for that. Sometimes you want uh, a text, uh, a final text to read aloud, for example, or uh, sometimes you need, uh, you know, a, a mechanic to uh, to count uh, points, for example, um, because uh, there can be different epilogues and, uh, and the action of the, the, um, the decision of players just uh, give out different uh, finals. And, uh, in some games, uh, you want uh, a debriefing. A debriefing can be very useful, of course, and when we come to educational games. And uh, sometimes uh, it's um, a, a good way to give people the chance to to cool down after uh, after a game, mm, especially if you want to create a game. That's, uh, that's uh, have not uh, a, a cathartic ending. Maybe it's a game about uh, frust frustration or uh, negative feelings, and then you want uh, to to guide people out of them, uh, and so you can use uh, a debriefing. I'm not always a fan of uh, of the debriefing the debriefing because sometimes. Uh, I feel more natural to just uh, let the, the game end and people to confront themselves uh, freely. But uh, of course, it's up uh, the kind of game uh, you're going to, to create. And uh, all right. So I I want to show you an example. I, I choose a game we, we, we have not already published. It will be part of the next uh, Crescendo Giocoso, Crescendo Giocoso Finale. We are uh, creating in, uh, in all those years from uh, uh, 2020, 2020. And so I choose uh, this game because of the, the instruction that we call the orchestration in Crescendo Giocoso because of the musical metaphor, but uh, the, the instruction for everyone are very, are very brief just uh, two pages and uh, you can see that the free section the setup the game mechanics and uh, and the epilogue as we are going to to see in the next slides uh, for this game which uh, we try to to keep the instruction as brief as possible because uh, uh, we already know we want to to write down a workshop. We are going to to see it, and 
so we can uh, add uh, other information in another stage of the game but uh, you know we just want uh, to have uh, all the information in uh, in the the instruction uh, pages i have seen uh, different author working in a different way for example uh, american authors often uh, like to repeat the same information in different stage of uh, of the instruction and uh, in order to stress out them i suppose uh, personally i like to to keep the the rules uh, as brief as possible and to have uh, um the same rules uh, uh, written down just what, one time uh, making uh, clear for the for the group uh, where they can found this information and so if they need to read it again there's no problem at all um, but it's just my my formal wind is my my idea and um I don't know, if uh, if there is uh, any question about this uh, this part about instruction for uh, everyone i think uh, it can be a good moment before uh, starting to speak about character sheet and so on so i keep the, the example on uh, on display and if uh, there is some uh, some question for uh, anyone i'm here i have a, a question um you said in the beginning that players sometimes have to develop the setting which mm -hmm. is not something you usually see. Usually they just create the character and the setting is given for granted by, uh, by the game. Do you have any examples, concrete examples of players creating the setting and what do you mean by that? Yeah, uh, for example, in a, in a timeout, a game, mm -hmm. we are going to see a character sheet in uh, the next uh, slides. It's a game about uh, nostalgia. And so uh, the group of players can be very different and uh, they have to, to write down on, the, on post it on, uh, on simple uh, on simple cards and um, something they all share and that uh, make them thinking about the past. So mm. songs are a very good example. But if we are uh, if we are from a different country of uh, or we have a different ages, it's not so easy to to find out um, the, a song that everyone uh, knows, for example. And uh, and so, in the in the setup of the game, there is, there is a phase about uh, make a proposition. Uh, this song uh, makes me think about the, my my childhood. Mm -hmm. everyone else know it and uh, it can be a, a quite long uh, phase if the the group is very is a very as very different uh, person in it and uh, yeah, we, yeah. we can just uh, you know say all right uh, it's uh, mm, it's like uh, you know uh, american an american story uh, like Stand By Me, for example. Stand By Me was a, an inspiration for uh, for the game, but uh, we didn't want to, to choose uh, an American setting, for example, because mm -hmm. we want the game to feel uh, as possible close to home for all the players. And uh, mm -hmm. so we didn't choose uh, names for the characters, for example, and ask, and ask uh, uh, players to, to choose them. And uh, so it goes for the for the feeling of uh, of nostalgia. Yeah, I understand. So it's something akin to I don't know, Fabula Ultima when they do the world building at the beginning or that kind of stuff. Bring it to tabletop because it's more my. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I I never played Fabula Ultima, but uh, in tabletop uh, there are a lot of games uh, doing this uh, this kind of stuff, and sometimes we we do the the same uh, for uh, for LARP. Okay. Because I haven't seen that often. Like in LARPs, I've seen it very rarely. 
Yeah, of course, course uh, because, because in, in, in Ralph, uh, especially big Lars with uh, a lot of uh, of custom and uh, and uh, a special location, yeah. uh, you need to to choose uh, a, a genre and uh, and a very specific setting, and you want everything to to fit in your logistical uh, choices. But uh, in in Chamber Lab, we can be more free about it. And so, do you think uh, that? Um... How to put it? Do you think that there is a limit of participants where making the setting building at the beginning can be inconvenient? I'm thinking, for example, 30 people or so. Yeah, of course, the, the problem is uh, if you're going to make, um, actually to give everyone the chance to, to put something in the setting, then uh, everyone has to remember it. Mm -hmm. And so, if you have uh, a lot of players, uh, you you can ask just uh, a very a very simple information from uh, from everyone. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, we with uh, Crescendo Giocoso usually work with uh, with small uh, with small group. Yeah, of course. And but uh, mm, I think uh, um, for for example, uh, uh, time out the game I was talking about. Uh, is a game for eight players, so it's mm -hmm. not it's not a super tiny, and uh, it uh, it can work uh, it can work quite well. I think the important thing is to to make a very very specific question in order to help the players to to give just uh, um, the amount of information that can be useful for the game and uh, and uh, acceptable for for all the group in order yeah. to remember them. I also yeah. have a question, <clears throat> two especially. First question about what is the main educational goal of this game, what you present now? And uh, second question about the materials. So if you uh, if you speak about the setting rules from participants, sometimes participants also uh, involved some extra materials in game. Yeah. So what do you uh, manage with this? How do you manage this? Well, Time Out uh, is not uh, um, a game written with uh, an educational uh, purpose, so it's uh, it's a game for for gamers, and but uh, um, it's um, it's quite a, a simple game uh, with uh, with two time settings, so uh, players are going to play. A child and and adults that are the, the same person, so it can be a good game for for empathy, but uh, it, it is not a, a specific uh, educational uh, purpose. And um, can I, I ask again the, the question about material, please? Because I uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a question about okay. materials. So like uh, two two parts have. Mm -hmm. Do you use some materials in this game? And if part, uh, second part, it's if participants who set the rule uh, involved some materials. So how you manage with this? So I mean, uh, um, you have some scenario, let's say. And after this, some change in here. So, and some materials. Sometimes materials super influent, uh, some details super influent to game, especially to role play game, because sometimes <clears throat> these materials, uh, let's say, make some atmosphere, yeah, or make some uh, picture, let's say, yeah. So, in this case, how you manage and what about your recommendation? Oh, yep. Um... We uh, we have uh, a, a different um, a different part uh, to to give uh, to the group a list of uh, of materials in order to have a, a very simple uh, a very simple list, and uh, we ask to to the group. <laughs> we are not there, of course, but uh, the the book is asking to the group how you would like to play. If you want to have a, a minimalistic uh, approach with uh, with very little materials, you can play with uh, things you can find in your room without any preparation. And uh, if you like to to stress the importance of uh, of cash, uh, custom location accessories and so on, you, you can uh, just uh, mm, came to a decision with the rest of the group. So. 
we um, we don't like to give all the responsibility to just you know the the owner of the book for example it's always uh, something to to decide together and uh, of course uh, material can be very um, very suggestive they can be very uh, very important but uh, we try to to keep them simple and uh, sometimes in the book uh, we offer um, a paper solution for example we have a, a game called uh, white noise and uh, we give to to each player uh, an object with uh, an illustration and then and then a textual destruction on side on the side but uh, if the if the players can bring the actual object for the game of course it's better but uh, this in this way we have uh, two option and, uh, and the the grub can decide uh, what's the best option for them so if i'm going to to play with my friend uh, very far uh, from home I don't, and i don't want to bring a lot of object uh, with me i can play without problem and if i want to organize uh, an event uh, for uh, for different people or maybe ask for a ticket for example and i have the budget to invest in uh, in location and uh, and props I can bring them with me. Can I also say something about this? Because I think I understand what Katya asked. You asked, like, if you let the people develop the setting at the moment, how do you deal with extra material that may come up during this phase? Was that the question, right? Right. So uh, as I understand, right, right, right. By, yeah, as I understand by having played these kind of things, they first, they're not changing the rules. They're only changing the setting. And there, so it's not a matter of needing more stuff or the rules are there already. Just the setting can change. Like you're creating the world at the moment, the details of the world. And those are in any case um, guided. So for example, we say, all right, the tone of the game is, just to make an example, humorous, tragic, whatever. And we all together decide the tone, decide the setting, add elements which are narrative but we are not having in that moment to create the whole game. We are just fulfilling the space of setting that we need. So there is no change in mechanics or rules. As far as I know, it could be interesting, a game where you have to change the rules during the workshop. I don't think I've ever seen that, uh, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, it would be fun, I think, where the players have to develop different rules in one. But uh, I don't. I think what uh, Oscar meant was just filling the gaps in the setting, which are left there for the purpose of uh, setting building. I yes. ask because in educational games, uh, sometimes it's especially people uh, change the rules, uh, especially this option because it's also. Depend on the goal of the game. That's why I asked Oscar about it. Uh, what do you mean, like participants it? change the rules of the game? Uh, no, not participants, facilitator. Because depend on the game and depend on the group, sometimes it's neat. Yeah. And uh, even I have some game when <laughs> in the middle of the game, rules, half of the rules changed. And participants know about it only in the middle of the game, not uh, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the game is designed to have the yeah. rules to change at some point. Yeah, yeah. All yeah, right, I, well. I am going to, um, to show you in the last uh, slides uh, a game I created for, uh, for schools. And uh, in that case, uh, uh, the point was to have a game I, I can explain uh, an act af after another act. So uh, different instruction and the rules change from an act to, to another. Uh, so it's not a problem uh, for me to change rules. If uh, I, as an author, change uh, the rules, if everything is, uh, if it's a plan. And, but, uh, um, you know, in role-playing games, you always have, you usually have uh, the author and then uh, the, the facilitator or the game designer. And, uh, they can be the same person, of course, but they can be two different person. And uh, the game master can bring uh, his experience to to the game. Of course, it's, it's not a problem. But uh, uh, if uh, I, as an author, publish a game that needed to be fixed 
by the game master, I don't think I have done a, a good job. Uh, so I I try to do my best to have a game that can work without any any editing on the fly by the by the game master. And then if the game master came to to master the the game after maybe a first try, then they can do with the game whatever they want, of course. But I I don't give it for uh, for granted. And I try to to publish a, a complete game after play test uh, and so on. But of course, we have to to consider the the, the presence of a facilitator sometimes, even if Cafriendo Jocoso is not written with the facilitators in mind. Uh, also, I have another question. Mm. What about the? Um, do you usually put? safety mechanics inside the game or you think it's something to be referred outside the main game structure being usually general i am uh, and if you use them of course yeah yeah so um i have my position about uh safety mechanic of course mm -hmm. uh, um, in, uh, in <laughs> crescendo giocoso uh, we have uh, a general introduction uh, so um, we're talking about in uh, how we play and in which condition our games uh, worked before. Of course, you can try to, to play them in different situations, but it's up to you and you have to know it. So uh, I think sometimes uh, there is a lot of uh, 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 safety mechanics are very stressed by by uh, the Nordic uh, author, for example, or American authors, like, you know, trigger warning for books. Mm -hmm. And um, I think uh, we always need uh, balance, even with uh, this kind of, uh, of stuff. Because for, exa for example, we, we speak about uh, safety because uh, uh, it's uh, a terminology that came down from uh, from uh, from bondage and from uh, sadomasochistic uh, ambient, and uh, I I know that in uh, in this uh, kind of space you need uh, uh, password or uh, or something very very fast and brief. Yeah. Uh, when I write a game, um, I wrote a game for school, and uh, to me it was uh, very important to to show role play as a, uh, as a, an activity very uh, simple inclusive and safe so uh, even if uh, in a role playing uh, audience we we speak we talk about the safety all the time it uh, didn't seem to me the the right word for uh, another audience so okay. i i um, i wrote about uh, communication the importance to to be clear, the importance to create uh, um, a safe place, but not using you know uh, specific rules, but stressing out the importance of uh, talking all together, and uh, to give uh, to uh, each player his space and his time to talk, because. Uh, it's very important to understand that uh, role-playing games are a collaborative game. But sometimes uh, I think uh, that uh, if we mm, stress out too much the importance of create a safe play in a space, and um, uh, new players can think, oh, uh, because is it not supposed to be a safe activity? Is, uh, is it dangerous? And uh, I think uh, it's something we need to to think about because in a role playing uh, space uh, safety is a very common word but i don't think it was the same for uh, for schools for example when they speak about safety it's something very you know important about you know fire about uh, something like that and yeah. then the yeah. to put so uh, you think even talking about safety with that word can trigger the feeling of not being safe or something. Yeah, that, 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 that's my... Uh, yeah, I understand what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. just, just my mind, but uh, I know I have um, quite a, a different point of view about this uh, this topic. 
it is quite yeah it is considering the scenario which like in the role play games community right now which they push a lot for the safety stuff i think it's an interesting take yeah because i think if uh, we just uh, repeat uh, the same things again and again for example you know use the x card for example yeah, yeah, yeah. every time i i play a demonstration in a game fair when i ask okay uh, we're going to use the the X card or uh, or other uh, safe mechanics, uh, people is going to say, yeah, 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 there's no problem. We're going to play because uh, you know, in, um, they they just uh, hear about it all the time, and uh, it's not so so powerful right now, and um, so I don't want to people to 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 think we have a rule, so it's everything okay. Because I think it's uh, not so simple to create uh, the right uh, situation to role play well. And uh, we have to put a lot of, the, of effort in it. And uh, I prefer to uh, to spend uh, more wor uh, words about uh, this topic than just say, okay, mm, this is this rule. You already know it. Go for it. I understand what you mean. Yeah. Like, like creating the situation where safety is created not just the mechanics for uh the player to you know resort to in case safety is not reached yeah and uh, it's quite interesting because when you choose the the words that you use even to explain the game rules i think uh, um, you are going to choose different words for different games if i want uh, a game to be to be very light and to be to be a comedy mm -hmm. i'm going to to explain it in a way, and if I want a game to be very tragic, I'm going to explain it in another way. Yeah. So if, if uh, we can uh, um, refocus on uh, the word we choose, it's, it's more difficult, of course, but uh, we can uh, uh, communicate a lot of uh, information, uh, mm, even without have a, a specific section for uh, for a thing like you know safety or or something else. Yeah, yeah, I understand what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. I think we can. All right. Any other so... question or something? Ah. Okay. Cool. So let's go with the the second main uh, section about uh, uh, confidential information. Of course, the the classic are um, character sheets. So let's start with them. Um, usually character sheets are written like, you know, a profile, maybe from a, a, a psychologist mm -hmm. about uh, who the the character is. And of course, it, it can be a way to, to write them. And uh, it's the most common because it, it uh, try to be the most uh, clear possible. And, uh, but... Uh, I like very much uh, uh, writing uh, diegetic uh, documents uh, because, as I was just saying, uh, uh, words can be very powerful, and uh, I like to to try to to show the personality of the characters, just uh, you know, uh, showing how this character write, for example. Let's see a couple of, of, of examples. On the left side. We have a card from uh, uh, Oppressi Oppressori, the, the game about uh, hate mechanics. All right, <laughs> we, we write for, the, for an Italian association. Um, and uh, it's a game for, for high school, for uh, uh, young uh, people that uh, um, I think uh, never played and never role play. And so I just want it to be the most clear possible. And here we have the, the classic, you, you are this kind of person. And I, I try to write something uh, smart in order to, to say to them which kind of character they are going to, <clears throat> to play without just writing down you are a, an arrogant person, for example. In this case, we have the indecisive uh, measure. In the, the first line are just, uh, you know, 
a way to describe the personality of the of the character and then in this game in particular we have uh, you know an uh, an objective for for the act because the game is uh, has five acts and uh, and this is a card you are going to receive in the second act so like you know different instruction you receive uh, in different moment and uh, you have a very simple instruction in this case, something I I usually um, can do for uh, for players, but uh, for uh, this kind of uh, of new players, I ask them just do this thing in your way because uh, this is uh, an opportunity to show to the rest of the group uh, which uh, character you are playing right now. So if you are the the major, you have uh, you have to to give uh, a speech, and so everyone can understand you are the major, because of course, in uh, this game everyone just receive his card, and so the rest of the group uh, don't know who is who. And uh, on the right, you can see a character sheet from. Uh, <clears throat> uh, time out the game I was talking uh, about about uh, nostalgia and uh, we were talking about uh, space to to fill out and you can see in the character sheet uh, um, since we we can't uh, choose names for the characters because of course if I choose an Italian name uh, they are going to be Italian characters and uh, we want to, to have a game that uh, everyone can play different uh, years, different uh, different country. Uh, so we have a space for the for the name. And uh, the character sheet is written like a letter, and it's a letter, uh, re no, a diary. Sorry, uh, a, a diary written by the character. So in this case, my question is. Uh, in uh, which way this uh, this character write? I try to to give to the player who is going to to play this character an example of uh, the words chosen by this uh, by this character, and um, so it can be a very effective way to to give uh, to give ideas to to the player, even if you can't be. Uh, so so focus on important information like you you can be in a profile in a profile I can just say you are this kind of person you have to remember this information and this information from your past the classic background and uh, if I read a diary page I have to to try to to make it uh, realistic and it's uh, a challenge every time and uh, if I if I choose a letter, it's going to be a letter that the character write to someone else, or this is going to be a letter that someone else write to the character about him. There are different kind of uh, information, different kind of uh, of, uh, of thinking about uh, how to use information for uh, for your character. Mm, and we tried very different uh, solution and uh, I think it's uh, it's an important decision mm, it's not so different from a, from a rule maybe it's not an hard rule but uh, it's uh, a, an important way to to share information about the character of course we are talking about confidential information so uh, Many many authors stress out the importance of uh, keeping uh, this information uh, secret. Mm, it's not always important in in our games because uh, uh, not always uh, in character sheet we have uh, spoilers about uh, the story. It's not all about the secret information that players uh, are going to to choose to to share or not, and because. Uh, Secret information can be very tricky sometimes because uh, as an author, you cannot be sure that the player understand the importance to share 
and information in the right moment because the player can just uh, think about uh, uh, how how would I do in if uh, if I am the the character and uh, if uh, as a character I have uh, a secret maybe I would not share it at all and so uh, the whole plot can be stuck. It's a classic problem in uh, in the design of uh, of some games and uh, in. Uh, diegetic uh, documents i like to to stress the importance of a uh, little story about the, the character and uh, because i think uh, you know it can be more interesting to to say uh, uh, something that happened to the character and then the player can share the story in the game if they if they don't know what else uh, to say I can uh, tell to the other uh, character uh, characters uh, the story of mine instead of just uh, you know use a very powerful and simple word. I can say you are an arrogant character, okay? But if I uh, write down uh, when you show how arrogant uh, you you have been, then you can just uh, you know tell the story if you want. And uh, if I share the story with uh, uh, the other characters, they have a story in common with different point of view, and I can start uh, to create my plot uh, starting from a very simple, uh, you know, story bricks to to build uh, my um, to build uh, my story. Uh, since uh, you know, character sheets are uh, something very classical and important in LARP. I don't know if uh, someone uh, has a question about uh, this topic in particular. Yeah, I have a question actually. Um, the level of depth that you can have when you are when you are doing some, something like that, um, it's like for experienced player only. Because when you play for in a school, for example, there are guys that can't or actually don't know that they can use those information and so on. So how you can balance the, um, you know, the experience in creating a, a setting that uh, experienced player has in a school or in a situation where you don't have the, it's not certain that they will do that, that they will create and use the notion. Yeah, I can uh, I can talk about my own experience with uh, with oppressi and oppressori. Yeah, and uh, I already already said that it's a game with different tax. And uh, sometimes uh, you can be surprised uh, uh, by by very young players or, or players uh, of all ages because uh, uh, create something is not always the, the most difficult thing. For example, the first act in Oppression Pressori asks to, to players to uh, create different place because it's a game in a village. So you just, uh, you know, draw a card and you with uh, two or three other players are asked to create a building that everyone else needed to know because it's an important place in the village, for example, the school. And uh, in the in the card, you have quite uh, a lot of question about the school. Uh, of course, uh, uh, we try to choose a very specific question in order to uh, um, give them, uh, give to everyone the chance to bring something to, to the setting um, without effort. And uh, I think the first act is uh, the most uh, funny for the for the for the classes for the for the school uh, because they are out of character and they are creating the setting and uh, it's not difficult at all for them and they also have uh, something very practical to do because if you have seen uh, Dogville. Uh, the movie when you have all the the buildings uh, with the uh, with the tape, uh, it's the on the floor. It's uh, we we took this idea, so we just you know uh, draw on the on the floor their building and they create it. And uh, when 
and I think uh, the most powerful thing when uh, you ask to people to create the setting is that it's their setting. And um, it's uh, all uh, about them. They are going to love it because they create it. And uh, it can be a very important uh, important uh, resource for uh, for creating the game. So I don't think uh, that uh, just you know ask them to create something can be the the most critical part because sometimes it's very difficult to ask them to to remember a lot of very uh, meaningful information we write down. And uh, I think it's one of the of the reason why, we have a lot of uh, information in a game about secret information, as uh, we were talking about uh, before. And, uh, and they fail because they ask too much to to, to players. But uh, I think that authors um, believe that uh, they were more in control of the of the story because they put down a lot of important information and just ask, to people to remember them. But sometimes if you, if you ask people to create them, they cannot fail because uh, they are created on, on the fly and they cannot uh, just, you know, I, I forget something important and that's a, a problem for the for the plot. So of course, I'm not saying that uh, uh, creating information and give uh, this kind of power to the, to the players, it's always a, a good solution, but uh, it's not uh, so, it's not so difficult. It's not so so hard, and uh, they can surprise you. Even if, uh, in my experience, sometimes you have uh, uh, the players at the end of a, a very good game, uh, they came to you and um, and say, "Oh, the game was very fun. The story was uh, was interesting." But I think that it, uh, if you, as an author, just uh, write the story down, it would have been better. Uh, but of course, if I can just prepare a story in advance, I can be very, you know, very focused. Uh, everything can be very coherent uh, and uh, and so on. But uh, uh, creating something on uh, on the fly, improvise something for the players, I think it can be very satisfying. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. I have also a question regarding this. Uh, just uh, because I really like the energetic material, I think it's very nice to give a suggestive element instead of a directive element. How, what diegetic uh, uh, material would you use if the players were plants, for example? Just like this, out of the blue, just <laughs> on the fly. What do you think? So it's interesting because I, I actually just for fun, okay. I'm not like, yeah, yeah. I actually wrote a game about plants. It was a, a, a remake of another game uh, from an American author. So which one is it? It's uh, uh, so uh, they say you should beg your plants for mercy. It's my it's my remake because uh, the original game was a very you know intimistic game about uh, a slice of life uh, of uh, just uh, one main character. Uh, talking to to his plants and uh, uh, everyone, every player just play out for one scene, uh, the main character and uh, the plants for for the other. Of course, we, we didn't use diegetic uh, uh, sheets in that case, so I, I don't have uh, an, an example. But of course, uh, uh, you can write uh, um, a diegetic material from them, you know, if you, I, I'm not a very experienced, uh, I'm not so much experienced with plants, but if you, if you believe that plants can, uh, can think, for example, yeah. it'd be interesting to, to write this, uh, this shit in, uh, in first person, mm -hmm. just trying to, to imagine uh, how uh, a specific uh, kind of plant uh, would think. When uh, we we wrote uh, the, the this game about plant, uh, we try to to give different personalities, of course, to to plants yeah. in order to to play them. So we, we use just a stereotype, of course. So, uh, for example, I remember the the fern is very ancient plant, 
So yeah. it's very, very wise. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, carnivorous plant can be, you know, quite aggressive uh, and uh, and things like that. And uh, because it was a game about uh, vengeance from plants to to to, to humanity. Yeah. Example, I'll ask you about this game later. Seems very nice. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have, for example, very resentful house plants because they they live uh, in a, uh, very near to to people, and mm -hmm. so they they can hate them <laughs> very much because they didn't yeah. get to give them uh, uh, water or or something or something like that. So we always try to uh, to communicate a personality. To, to players when we create a character sheet uh, on uh, of any kind because we just want to create for them an alibi because yeah. uh, I think the most important point of uh, a role-playing game is uh, uh, saying to, to a player, you are not yourself. You can do different things. You can do mistakes. You can be a bad person yeah. because uh, everyone... Uh, uh, share the same pact and yeah. uh, it's like you know if uh, we are going to play a very you know you know a child game yeah like uh, so garden robbers for example mm -hmm. if we have a uh, police and thieves i don't know in english uh, yeah. <laughs> the way. but i am um, if i just start to, to to follow you all the time and run at you everything is okay because uh, we know we are playing together but if I just uh, wait for you outside your home and start to run uh, and and follow you, it can be very very frightening, no? So yeah. that's uh, that's the idea. It's very important to give to to a player another identity. Yeah. If, if you're playing, uh, you know, a very minimalistic uh, Nordic LARP, for example, they always give you a profession, uh, an objective, uh, and something like that in order to say you are not yourself. Of yeah. course, you, you can create a game where you want people to be to be themselves, but uh, it's a, a very different kind of, uh, of experience. And I think uh, this kind of, uh, of alibi is the main difference between a role-playing game, for example, and, and escape room mm. yeah. or, or murder party, for example, because if I play a murder party or an escape room, I myself, and I'm trying to be the smart as I can, because mm -hmm. I try to win the game with my friends. Yeah. If I play a role-playing game, even in the same situation, if my play, if my character is uh, is dumb, for example, yeah. uh, my objective is to be very dumb and to say silly thing because uh, that's the point of, uh, yeah. of playing. And so I think uh, this is a very important uh, information to share every time. Yeah. Thank you. I understand what you mean. Yeah. Cool. And so okay, let's. So if uh, there aren't any question about the the cutter sheet, I can uh, I can go on mm -hmm. the slide. So about uh, workshop, the you're an, another new new classic uh, like uh, you know uh, the briefing in uh, a room playing game. Uh, I don't uh, I don't use them all the time. But just for a specific game, uh, because uh, and they are like you know a, a trial run. I know uh, designer like uh, Nina Runa Lesson drop from uh, from Denmark that create game when the trial run is uh, is crucial because uh, she make you try all the game for a first time in order to understand the game, understand what you're going to do, because sometimes they are very abstract game. And then a second time, you are going to play the, the actual game. And uh, I know he, she she took inspiration from uh, an Italian kind of uh, theater, actually. And uh, so um, they create, uh, you know, a theater piece in which the the player uh, the, the actors sorry uh, didn't play don't just don't play a character they are just themselves and they have no uh, no text no 
there's nothing uh, fixed, there's no script, and they just react to, to people. And, uh, and so in this case, uh, uh, the, the workshop is uh, the main part of the game. Mm, I have uh, an example of uh, a workshop from uh, The Flower in the Dark, that it's the game uh, that uh, I show the, the orchestration the instructions. So this is the the descent to, to Erebus. It's a game about uh, Iliad and uh, and Achilles. And uh, in this case, for example, why we choose to create a workshop? Because in this game, we have a game mechanic. Okay, I'm going uh, into the, to the game mechanic. That is uh, quite simple to do, but not so simple to explain. Because it's a game about, you know, you have to close your eyes and you have to give your hand to another player with... Uh, with eyes open and the other player is going to guide you through through the space and then uh, they have to ask you where you want to go even of course we are playing in just one room and uh, a lot of uh, of little details so we decide to give uh, an overall impression of the game in the game mechanics and then to use the workshop to uh, make the the players uh, um, experience the the mechanic before starting the game because uh, you know it's a uh, it's a game in uh, in uh, actually in uh, in hell about uh, the meaning of life uh, about the, the decision to to seek for glory instead to it's a very you know solemn game and we didn't want to to spoil it with uh, you know with interruption with uh, I don't I didn't understand how to keep uh, uh, your hand in order to guide you effectively and so on uh, so we thought the the, uh, the best solution was to to write down a, a workshop and uh, we try to keep uh, the tone very you know very epic because it's about Achilles and uh, Mm, here in uh, in um, in the workshop, uh, we can keep you know a, a language with more uh, with more style because uh, in the instruction we just want them to understand as much uh, information as possible in a very brief space. But now with the workshop, we are going to ask them to read uh, one paragraph and then. Uh, follow the instruction and then to the next paragraph and so on. So we can try to be, you know, to have a, a very specific uh, style in our way of, uh, of writing, because, you know, it's like uh, um, an intermediate moment between uh, the instruction and the actual game. It's like uh, in the middle. And uh, we want people to start uh, uh, to think about uh, the setting, we want them to to don't speak at all. For example, also at Karate, if possible, and uh, if they have to speak, uh, they can choose a, a tone uh, more similar to the tone of the game. So they are starting to leave uh, uh, themselves, their former self, their identity behind in order to start thinking about their role in the game so it can be an effective uh, tool but uh, i use it only if i think it can be useful in the in the game of course and um, it's not uh, you know mandatory or something like that i, I put a point about uh, you can have uh, a workshop for all the all the players or have different workshop for different team of uh, of characters because of course you can have uh, a, a game with different faction or something like that and in this case i like to use uh, the the instruction the orchestrations for uh, uh, giving to the the group all the information they have together and then if i have some special rules uh, or some uh, or something secret for just uh, one team I can uh, I can create a different workshop, and then have uh, and then I ask to them to to split, and then to to read their uh, their workshop, 
And so I have uh, another section in order to, to give this kind of, inf of information. It can be always uh, useful. And then uh, a, last, uh, a last point for, for Pesciano Giocoso uh, about uh, other endouts. For example, always with the flower in the dark, we have uh, a, a premius and uh, three possible epilogue. And this time uh, we try to create something like, you know, like verses, even if it's not poetry. Uh, because uh, the uh, Iliad was the was the inspiration, and uh, in this case we we wanted to we have, we have a system of uh, of point in this kind in this game. Okay, so we have it just write down in the epilogue. We have uh, we speak about two colors of uh, of stones of uh, of token, and then you can have three kind of epilogue. So ask for the med medius if uh, you have uh, the same number of tokens, red one and white one. You can have uh, Elysium field if you have more white token than, uh, uh, sorry, more red token than white token. And then the, uh, the, uh, the last uh, possible epilogue, home, if you have more uh, white token than red one. So with a very, very simple uh, mechanic, just, you know, it's like a voting mechanic in this case, even if the, the vote is a secret because they just have to, to put uh, a token in, uh, in a container. Uh, we can have three different epilogue. Of course, even in this way, uh, we just want to have uh, something, uh, you know, suggestive, something, uh, just to have an epic epilogue and then um, because we, we we didn't need to to say something very specific because uh, uh, it's not this uh, this kind of game with a lot of different characters all the players uh, uh, just play achilles in this game so they are a different part of the same uh, personality and uh, there are just uh, three possible outcome and we use the text to give uh, the player uh, satisfaction for the for the decision and in order to to say to them you choose this particular uh, ending even if of course they choose it together so maybe one player just want uh, one kind of epilogue and another player uh, prefer another it's not a problem because uh, to say them, it's uh, it's up to you as a as a team as a group, and just want to reward them with uh, a nice text to to read together. And it can be you know one of the many strategies to have uh, to give an epilogue to to a game. And uh, I also write down about prompts. Because like, you know, in, uh, in impro, in uh, improvisation uh, theater, we work quite often with, uh, you know, with, uh, with card, with uh, simple prompts to, to give fuel to the conversation. Because of course, role playing game is uh, mostly about conversation between different characters and uh, in, working with uh, simple prompts can be a way to you know to give something to the players during the game without uh, uh, push them out of the game uh, for example we we wrote a game about um, a radio and uh, uh, when you are not the the radio conductor you are outside and you can just uh, uh, draw a card and read which kind of uh, of listener you are, and you can uh, you know send to the to the conductor a, a message, recording with your with your cell phone, and you are improvising something like that. I, in the car, you just uh, find something like you know you really hate uh, this uh, this conductor of the radio, and uh, and it's uh, it's what you need to just. Uh, Take your phone and uh, and send a message uh, to him. It can be very very simple um, because we don't want to distract 
the player in this moment, which is what to to give uh, to give him an idea, a very simple idea. So we we work quite often with uh, with card, uh, and uh, we find it a uh, quite effective solution instead of uh, you know very long character sheet. Uh, they seems quite uh, old fashioned to to our community right now because uh, uh, we prefer to you know uh, to make uh, every word uh, count and to keep it uh, as brief as possible but with uh, a lot of style or uh, with uh, um, very effective information at the right moment instead of uh, throw to to player. A, a very long document with a lot of information and just, you know, uh, cross our finger, uh, hoping that uh, they are going to, to remember all this stuff. And uh, we, we already uh, talk quite a lot about oppression pressori, but I just wanted to, uh, to stress did out- you, uh, Did you translate this? Yeah, of course. Uh, you have I, an English version of this game? No, I just translate uh, a card in order to, okay. to show it to, to you. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know if uh, the, um, the association uh, is going to, to translate it because uh, it's up to them, but uh, it's uh, uh, oppressed, uh, oppressors. Uh, and yeah, oppressed. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oppressed and oppressors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, so um, uh, I wrote it for um, for high school, as uh, I already mentioned, and uh, and uh, I um, my my starting point is I wanted to use only uh, role playing game tools for this game because I have seen a lot of times creating educational game with uh, uh, tools from a different kind of game. There is nothing wrong about it, but you know, uh, a treasure hunt can be very, <laughs> can be, yeah, of course, it's not a problem at all. It can be very fun, but I'm not good in creating treasure hunt because I never create one. And uh, sometimes you, you know, you have uh, uh, tools from uh, board games um, and uh, everything is fine. But uh, to me, the, the first challenge was to use just, you know, uh, tools from uh, role-playing games. So uh, about card text, about um, interpretation, about creating a story and not using tools that can be very funny, but also uh, distracting from, uh, from the point. So it was my, uh, my own challenge. No one asked it to me, but I, I wanted to, to try to create something like that. And the second point was to create a game not for gamers. So uh, my first decision was to uh, to give a different rule in uh, in different X. So different rule set in order to not ha not have just you know a one main uh, rule set very long, and ask them to remember it. Uh, so I tried to give them just a brief information. And for example, I was talking about the first act. You have to to draw your binding with the tape on the floor and answer to the question on the card. Stop. Second act, you are going to receive a card with your role in the village. And I asked to do a, a, a something I wrote on the card. Playing all together. In the third act, uh, we are going to. You can see a picture for the for uh, for the third act in the right side of the of the slide. In um, the third act, uh, we just want to to divide uh, uh, characters from uh, oppre um, oppressors and oppressed. So you can see the the two the two different color. So it was like you know a, a ritual and uh, something very very simple. In the, in the in something very simple, but it was the hardest act to to write down because we, we have to to give them a lot of information, uh, very precise about their position in space, 
about how to uh, how to uh, draw on the on the floor the line that uh, is going to divide uh, oppressors and oppressed. So sometimes, uh, you know, in this case, the third axis is very simple to to imagine for us, uh, but uh, we need to give uh, a lot of very tiny rules in order to have uh, uh, one half of the of the characters in one side and the other half on the other side. So um, it was quite tricky to to write because it's not about uh, role play at all. It's about you know it's about maths. Uh, it's about uh, uh, so if even if you try to to explain a, a game we we do um, as child, it can be quite uh, quite difficult. Ruba uh, bandiera flag, uh, I think uh, in English. It can be very tricky to to explain because you know, okay you you're going to create two lines one person in the middle uh, holding uh, a, a little flag and then it's going to to call for a number so it seems a lot of information for a very simple game I'm going to play in just uh, seconds and uh, it happened the same for with uh, with the third yeah. act of super story and in the third uh, act. In, it's like the, the second one, but you're going to receive another card. So for example, you were the, the major in the, uh, with the first card, and then with the second card, you received another role. And you're going to, to play them both at the same times because you can be the major and now you can be oppressed. So you are... Uh, uh, the, the elected major by you, your opinion doesn't count at all. And you just have to obey because you are an oppressed or maybe you are an oppressor. And so you, you maybe you can be the chief of the oppressor because you are the major. We have to, to put the, 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 two, the two cards together. And then uh, when, when we have, uh, and, and of course, with the second card, you have other instructions. So if you are a, an oppressed, you have to obey or to choose someone else to obey in your pla in your place. And if you are um, an oppressor, you have to give a specific order to an oppressed and then you have to, to obey or to uh, show you someone else that will obey your order. Uh, so it's the same uh, it's the same way of the, the card I just show you for the for the measure. And then now you have a, a, five, a fifth act when you have the, the same mechanics, so someone is going to give an order to, to someone else, but this time we are not playing all together, but uh, in, in couple, and uh, all the other players are going to be the audience. And then, of course, they can, uh, they can just uh, try to, to save the, the oppressed using uh, a special card, uh, in with the, the 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 righteous because it was a game about righteous people in the world sacrificed themselves and, and so you can uh, draw a card became the the righteous but then you have to pay the price and uh, you just have uh, uh, a specific amount of cards and uh, if you use it to save someone else maybe there will be no cards for you when you need to be saved so it's very, it's a very simple game. So in order to to rules, and uh, we try to keep it uh, as simple as possible because we didn't want to, you know, to make uh, uh, their brain explode. Because um, in school they didn't choose to role play, and uh, it's uh, another um, critical point. So uh, we didn't want to to make them afraid. Or I, I can do something wrong or something like that. We want to keep it easy, and uh, even for safety, it was uh, a point. Thinking about the game, uh, when we we tried out with our friend, uh, someone uh, say to me, mm, "I would like to to have some rules for for compact, for example," and uh, my 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 answer was, "Yeah, but uh, they are." Uh, a class 
in a school, they they live together, and uh, contact will uh, always be uh, a point, something to to discuss, and uh, I think it's not the moment to to wrestle uh, to wrestle problem or something like that. It's up to to the teacher, for example. So it was uh, our decision because we didn't want to to scare them. Say it can be a dangerous uh, a dangerous game because it's not, of course, but it. Uh, it can it can be like anything else if uh, people uh, just not work together but uh, one against the other and uh, so yeah five bucks and personal cards and uh, when i tried the game with uh, within schools um, the the rule set um, went quite well with uh, with uh, school guys and, and girls but uh, uh, I had some problem with uh, with the teachers because uh, in the first uh, in the first edition, the first draft, uh, I didn't uh, write something for them because uh, I didn't think about it uh, because they are not going to play. And uh, in crescendo giocoso, everyone is going to play. So uh, I don't know if you have uh, ever seen. Uh, Shakespeare in love, uh, and every time there is a problem uh, with the with the, with the show, uh, the <clears throat> uh, the character just uh, just ends where uh, it's a mystery, but everything uh, will go fine, will be good, and uh, I think uh, it can be quite the same with role play. You, it's it's not so simple to to imagine the game before playing. It's something we we try to do as author, but it's not so easy for the for the players that uh, cannot you know uh, spend a lot of time thinking about the game before starting uh, playing. And uh, but uh, with um, with the teacher, they are not going to play, and so they are going to see from the outside something is not be meant to be seen from the outside. So it's like a chaos, a totally chaos, and so. If I, uh, when I didn't stress out uh, the the objective, uh, the educational objective, uh, like uh, Katerina was asking to me about uh, time out, I um, didn't say to them uh, what's the point, uh, what uh, which uh, which uh, which are the important parts. Uh, they have no no idea. Uh, no way to understand what's going on. So uh, I, after the the first play test, I write uh, a, a new introduction for for teachers, in order to to explain to them not only what's a role playing game, but uh, uh, on what they are supposed to focus. Uh, in which way they can check if everything is good in a specific act. Uh, for example, in uh, in the first act, when uh, the players are going to, to create their building, it's very important that uh, each player can, uh, can talk and can be listened to the rest of the group. So he asked to the teacher, let's check out that uh, everyone just have his, uh, his chance to talk to the group, and um, and so uh, they have uh, something uh, something to do. For example, that I think is is always uh, a way to reassure someone. Someone, the the Titanic is going to to sink, but uh, if you if you continue playing your violin, uh, maybe you can be less scared, and. Uh, and it's, um, it's, uh, it, it was a solution to, to make a teacher a resource instead of a problem. Because of course, if I, if I spend two hours just watching something I don't understand, it can be very frustrating. And so I'm not going to be very happy with the, with the activity. And uh, we also decided to create a soundtrack for the game 
not just uh, a music uh, for the for the background but uh, also a text reading aloud by by the friend uh, friend of mine uh, because uh, we understand uh, not uh, all the teachers uh, want to be actors or something like that so it, it can be embarrassing to them to to read uh, a text aloud because they are not so sure about the activity and so they are not so sure about what they are talking about and so um, we give them an option you can use the soundtrack or you can just read the text uh, aloud and so um, every every time uh, the challenges uh, are different with different uh, public uh, you you try to found uh, to find different solution and uh, you know of course impressori was a, a good chance to to try to do something different maybe something more uh, more similar to what you you you're working about game for for a, a young audience or game for or not for gamers as a... yeah <laughs> yeah I, I was looking at it right now just also the division in premises and then introduction and some parts color it different for facilitator i think that uh, they're interesting parts of the manual i think um i have a question about the chaos that you were talking about because seeing the game from outside can be chaotic and uh, so on and just uh, just a thing before you ask let's keep it like maximum 10 minutes for questions because i think people is hungry so i'm just timing you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would be very keep quick. Questions and we keep talking and we end up being nine in the night. And um, in the last playtest, we had uh, someone, uh, Manuel, that was playing uh, and I was doing as faci facilitator. And um, the situation went a little bit chaotic because Manuel was playing uh, in the bird group in care, obviously, we were testing the game. And he said, I'm a seagull and started to act like a seagull. And uh, the reaction from the, the player was like panic because everyone went out of the box and the game went a little bit chaotic because everyone was more in the situation, was, was more fighting for the resources and uh, the talk was a little bit of the tone and so on. So this is normal in the game, in the care actually, uh, and uh, we were okay because we were testing the game and that's all. But in a school, that can be a little bit too much, maybe to see from outside and so on. So how um, also if we have a soundtrack that can make everything more chaotic as well, where it's enough? What do you think? Because letting play, game and so on it's quite dangerous uh, letting them create the story and uh, do whatever they want can be a little bit dangerous in this way no what do you think all right so i just stop the uh, sharing the the screen so that we can <laughs> with the uh, talk face to face uh, and so um i think uh, mm, of course every every group of uh, of players is uh, different and uh, for example, uh, when uh, when a library asked me to to bring uh, uh, oppressors and oppressed to a secondary school instead of an high school, it was uh, quite different. And of course, it was different when we play with our friends and then with the, with the, the actual high school. Yeah, sure. Uh, we uh, we create a game, you know, a very serious game about uh, the mechanical fate. But when you ask to uh, a secondary school guy to to make something uh, uh, very bad to to his friend uh, to make uh, into to obey to an order, maybe he's just going to say jump, and uh, it's not so you know so cathartic like an adult. Uh, thinking about uh, Holocaust and then... Uh, <laughs> sure, and it's quite it's, different. It's, it's, it's very different in tone. But uh, um, I think the, the game uh, worked uh, because uh, it keeps uh, its point. Uh, the, the point is uh, 
mm, I ask to you to do something just because uh, I am asking you and I'm more powerful than you. And, uh, and uh, it's the same, even if the tone is uh, it's very different. Uh, mm, for every game, uh, mm, you will have a very different uh, outcome. But uh, I think we try to, to keep uh, rules simple because we want people to, to follow them as precisely as possible. And uh, if we have, uh, you know, a more comedy game and then uh, a more tragic one, you know, it can be frustrating because as an author, we have a lot of expectation about, uh, about your story. But uh, I think uh, it's better to, um, to try to fix just a couple of very important points and uh, if you reach them, it's okay. And uh, a moment of chaos is not a problem. You will always have a, a player say something very strange uh, and, and, and out of tone at some point. <laughs> like uh, Manuel is shouting, I'm a seagull. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a classic. Uh, I played a very tragic game of written by a, a friend inspired to, you know, Chuck Palahniuk, uh, Tarantino, something pulp yeah. and pretty dark. And uh, at, uh, at the very moment, uh, someone created a flashback about a soccer game, and uh, and the friend just uh, uh, came in scene uh, uh, shouting, "I'm the ball! I'm the ball!" Was, what? <laughs> yeah, but uh, at the very end, uh, we, we had the game with uh, a lot of uh, tra tragic deaths and so on. So it's good that we we just uh, we That's just true. Recover. You know, honestly, I also I think I I don't mind chaos so much. I think a little bit of chaos it's it's important to have. It's it's important to have the moment of even loud. I don't think people, even kids, should be always silent and down. I think shouting and but it, it's all right as long as it keeps the point, as you say, right? I mean, don't talk about football. That's completely something. Yeah. In your case, yeah. it was on point, but usually, you know, <laughs> totally something else. So, if, but if you shout, I'm a seagull, it's still inside the game. It's still pushing it. So I think we should maybe be even softer with kids and let them have their chaos. In yeah, the yeah. so it's uh, also a, a matter of, of respect. Uh, you know, if you, you came out with something, uh, it's very strange to me. Uh, if I don't, you know, just uh, loathe at you and just go out of game and say, what are you yeah, doing? It's crazy. Yeah, uh, I understand. I have to accept your prompt, even if I don't like it. Yeah. And um, we always try to uh, to see all the, the possible situation like a, a prompt. For example, a problem in a, in game is always... In a game, I can kill you, for example. I uh, um, How can we manage it? In yeah. this case, say, uh, pointing a gun at your character and say, I and, and shot you, it's uh, a prompt like anything else. It's like a, a proposition. And then you can take all the time you want for dying because I'm not just uh, taking you out of the game because it's not my objective. I just, I'm just saying uh, with the gesture, I think it would be interesting if your character die in this story and you are saying to me okay i ac accept your proposition but yeah uh, i have also different ideas so i i will take all the time i need in order to to actually die uh, because i want to say other things yeah and the fact is that you are not going to just shoot me in the head three times to say okay out of the game right now but you just make a proposition and give me the time to to accept it and yeah, I think so it's a falling forward thing, as yeah. we usually say in role play games. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Are there any other questions or things? Huh? Okay, well, I think it was a very nice conversation. I really appreciated you taking the time to uh, you know, share it with us. And thanks for everybody who participated today. I think I, I really like your company. And we are going to see each other soon and uh oscar thank you for your time i wish you a good evening and how do i stop the recording here on <laughs> recording there is a square closed uh, you can you can pull uh, uh you can uh stop in the uh, depend on uh te te telephone or cell phone or laptop you can stop uh, there is a, there is a big square it's written up. stop recording i will press that
uh, now there uh, pausa yeah uh, in the in apps yes yeah, so you can uh, uh, press pause yeah. post poses the stop recording is the one you should press right mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah 